This is the Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to the Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, September 6th show. I've built a network of elite industry professionals every week, sharing their knowledge and expertise with all of my listeners. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you're listening to a rebroadcast. You can always call into the show at one 1- Eight five five four hundred eleven fifty. Again, that's one eight five five four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyr.com to discuss anything regarding money with myself or talk to any of the experts that I have in studio here each week. And right now in studio, I have Rylan Tanaguchi with Keller Williams Realty Bothell talking about real estate cycles and when to invest in the real estate market. And I have to say, Rylan, you're a little d- different spin on real estate conversation from what I typically have in here. And you've got a lot of, a lot of experience in cycles and um, uh, what the real estate market is doing just from a different angle than I think I've ever heard before. So it's always a pleasure to have you here. And I thank you so much for taking time to to, uh, sit across the table with me. Yeah, it's great to be here. Can you believe it's already September? I know. <laughs> What's Christmas happening? The kids are be here. kids are back to school. Halloween's coming up. Christmas is coming up. I know. It's just crazy how things uh, move so quickly. And a little bit about Rylan. Rylan has been investing in real estate since 2000 and has certified in construction management from the UW. He has flipped over 45 homes and has owned 15 rental properties. And with this, he has experienced the experience needed to share a wealth of advice. And I always say when you're looking for somebody to work with in uh, in uh, a category, whether it's uh, mortgage and real estate, financial planning, you want to see what they're actually doing personally themselves in the area that they're supposedly an expert at, because that says a lot on that they've gone through the process and experienced themselves. And so it's exciting to see all the investing that you've personally done in, uh, in the real estate market. So Rylan, is now a good time to invest in real estate? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, I think last time we were on the show, um, we we're talking about a really interesting topic that kind of I uncovered in the last two years of mm-hmm. researching for a book. And um, you know, I started real estate in two thousand. Uh, I did most of my investing in the past, actually, not recently. Uh huh. Uh, it was more in the last the last cycle of the real estate. And uh, you know, some of the things that we uncovered in the book was uh, just this amazing historical analysis. Where you went back to 1800, you know, I, I did some, found some out of published books in 1818 and 1836, 1854, and you would actually think that you were in today's market if you go back in history, back yeah. to those times. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the the theory of the 18 year cycle, which I've never heard mm-hmm. of in all the years I was in real estate. I've never I've never heard it before either. Before I had yeah, you in and, studio, and it's and it's kind of a um, hard one to spot because in in our recent history there was no 18 year cycle in the 40s mm-hmm. as a result of World War II. Uh, there was uh, a double dip in the 70s and 73 and 79 in the real estate cycle. So. Uh, in modern history, uh, it doesn't look like there's a, a steady pattern of an 18-year cycle. Uh-huh. Uh, but there's an economist uh, from Berkeley in 1997 that uh, you know the last crash before this this crash in 2008 was in 1990. And so what he predicted was that based on his theory of the 18-year cycle, that the next crash would happen in 2008. He did this prediction in 1997, wow. which uh, you know nobody pretty nobody took him seriously. But now that you look back, you're like, wait a second, how'd this guy, <laughs> how'd they guy possibly figure that out uh-huh. um, 11 years before the event? So I started researching uh, some of the analysis that he had in it, and it's absolutely amazing. He predicts right now that rents will be going up in the cycle, yeah. which uh, you see pretty prevalent. And then what he predicts next in the cycle is that uh, that credit will be uh, easily available again. Mm-hmm. So it's it's interesting to see the pattern. So based on the last cycle being well, in 2000... Hopefully it's not easy... As as it was before, as I said, because I just you know think that could be devastating for uh, for the market. But well, you know, but it's interesting. You go back in history, right? You look at the old railroad days, and uh-huh. they would go through these patterns where it was easily get, to get credit, and then it would, they would go to their crash, and then they would go through a period where yeah, you know, the regulations was in, and you know, it's 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 very common. Yeah, huh. um, that's why it's take eighteen years because it's probably eighteen years before you forget. 
mm-hmm. what happened last time. And then you're ready to start all over again. Ready with to agreed. start and make the same mistakes again. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Rylan, what about, how do you advise your clients on the best ways to find the best deals in real estate? Yeah. So, um, you know, Gil was talking about a very interesting thing with the auctions. Uh-huh. Um, early in my buying career, I purchased homes at the auction. And like he was saying, uh, you know, you have a interesting mix of characters down at the auction. Um, I've seen some of these same guys that he's talking about uh, accidentally buy our second mortgage, whereas uh-huh. the yeah. client, you know, they they thought they're buying a home for one fifty, but now they're you know they're in the house for three thirty. Yep. Uh, so there are some. Um, they say buyer beware when you go at the auction. There's there's definitely a lot of risk. Yeah. I, I know I've been with uh, properties that were at the auction that. Uh, you know, there was a underground oil tank. And I knew uh-huh. that because I had done some, um, you know, I was familiar with the property before it went on through the auction steps. Uh, and, you know, you go down to the auction and people are bidding on this property and they have no idea the risks involved with it. Yes. So it's definitely a risky, um, risky event with the auctions. Uh, there are some great investors that, you know, uh, you know can, do, can do that type of stuff. But sure. for the beginner... It might be a little bit of a risk to buy properties at the auction. Well, we all know that, you know, usually the higher risk has going to have a higher return. So it's just an insane in, in Jim's arena. I mean, it's just deciding in, in how much risk you want to take, where your comfort level is, and, uh, you know, making a strategic decision. Right. Well, that's true. But, you know, what, what's interesting is you're going to see that those same properties mm-hmm. are um, available before auctions in what's called a short sale. Okay. Then they're available at the auction, and the properties that don't sell become available later as a bank owned property. Mm-hmm. Or the so REOs. My own experience is uh, I, I purchased personally two homes from the auction in the past. Um, one of them was a complete disaster. Uh-huh. It was a home that uh, had, um, you know, studs that were like, you know, for some reason, somebody decided to glue studs together. I, I have no idea why you would, you, you would do that. Uh-huh. But you open, you know, you don't know until you open the drywall. You get in there and there's studs, and uh, and was, this was auction bought property. Um, you know, you can't do a full good thorough inspection on the property. Yeah. So what we're recommending to our clients and uh, two of the agents that um, are on, you know, we have 13 agents at the Ryko Group, Kill Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, two of our agents are specialists in what's called bank owned properties. Okay. And so they are some of the top listing agents for for that particular category. And so normally we'll talk to the uh, investor clients that we have and recommend they go that route. Okay. Uh, with uh, bank owned properties, um, they're 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 um, they're properties that um, went through the auction process, didn't go through, and, and the clients could do a full inspection and things like that. On yeah, that. and I think you know it's important to understand with auction. I mean, it hits the auction once, and if it doesn't sell, then it goes back to the bank as an REO. So what's happening in that arena right now? Yeah, and so I'm actually interesting um, in the sense that I'm actually on two sides of the fence in the REO industry. Okay. Um, on one side of the fence is I have two listing brokers that specialize in these REO bank-owned properties. Uh-huh. On the other side of the fence, I actually own an asset management company. Uh, right now, we're putting a bid on, uh, it's called a D1 region for HUD. Okay. And if we get this uh, bid from the government, basically, we'd get uh, 250 properties in four different states a month. So a total of 1,000 properties a month, which is a lot of properties. Oh, my gosh. And so it's interesting because uh, being an, uh, on the REO listing side of the business and being on the asset management side of the business, you see two different paradigms as to sure. how this business works. And so from the asset management side of the business, what I've learned is that um, what, you, know, you have to comply with the, the, the goals that HUD has. Mm-hmm. And so one of the goals is, um, for example, that they would prefer to have owner-occupied, non-investors purchase these bank-owned properties. And so we've seen this as a REO listing agent where uh, the, we'll have a, our a investor that will make a higher offer than one of the uh, – there'll be a cash offer, they're an investor, right? They'll make a higher cash offer – than some of the offers that are being financed. Okay. And, uh, you know, we go through the, the big contract and find that the, uh, the, the, prop, the offer that was lower based on financing contingencies actually mm-hmm. got accepted. And the cash offer mm-hmm. that was higher because they were an investor didn't get accepted. Some interesting things like that. Huh. And why do you think that is? Well, it doesn't make any sense uh, from the listing side, but as an asset manager, mm-hmm. what I've learned about that is just because you're, you're trying to uh, keep in, in, the, in, in line with the goals that HUD has, and they're looking yep. for um, owner-occupied, owner-occupied. Uh, people that want to live in the house mm-hmm. long-term. So yep. this is an example of uh, some interesting trends you see. Huh. One of the other things I've seen is that uh, the uh, as a, on the HUD side, what what they have is tiers, mm-hmm. right? So there are so many properties in a in a portfolio that you manage that you um, you have to you can allow to go at a lower price. Usually, it's the uh, dilapidated homes that um, you know have have a lot of cost to 
to get them back to market ready. Okay. Um, so there's there's a pool of properties that we you can accept offers on a lower the lower side of the bit of mm-hmm, the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Then there's a middle spectrum that um, you can accept properties that are middle price in the middle range. And then there's a, a portfolio where they want to see properties that are uh, in this market a little bit over market price. Okay. So there's a range of values that you can get. Uh, on these bank-owned properties, and it's it really doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know, being uh, kind of on the asset management side and seeing kind of how that works, um, you know, it's been interesting to see the dynamics and how the pricing how pricing. Uh, you know, prices that will be accepted on those properties that the banks have for sale. Yeah, it makes total sense. So, Ryland, what about a, a bubble? How do you how do you know when when we're getting ready to hit another bubble? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. Um, I think if all of us knew that last time, right? And th- there are some very smart people that do. I yes. believe some of these hedge funds that Gil was talking about. Uh, you know, they're very smart in figuring out the how to plan for bubbles. Uh-huh. Um, you know, when the forming, when the sell, things like that. Um, so, you know, going back to this 18-year cycle plan, you know, so if that, if you start the cycle in 2008, that would, you know, you put it 18 years ahead, of, actually go back to 2007, okay. go back uh, up uh, 18 years from that, you know, you have a, um, you know, forecast 2025. Now, um, there are events that could happen that could throw that 18-year cycle off. Just like a, it has before. Yeah, a war, mm-hmm. a currency collapse, a currency uh-huh. collapse can cause real estate to crash at any time. If that were to happen, it's very unlikely, but uh-huh. it's a, these are all possibilities. So it's not like a sure thing that that's sure. going to happen in this 18-year cycle. But let's assume it, it did happen in 2025. Um, you, you'll see, um, you'll see uh, signs of a bubble forming. Um, you know, there's a thing called cap rate compression mm-hmm. when it gets really hard to uh, for um, when you have investment properties to get cash flow on those properties. That's an indicator. You'll see okay. massive amount of construction activity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's there's definitely a lot of activity um, indicators out there. Yeah. For, for that for that bubble when that's going to occur. Yeah. It's it, it's interesting when you look at the when you look at the stats and you look at trends and different things that the market for the most part apart there are trends and you can see everything and see that it's coming unless you like you said the if there's something that is unexpected that happens that can change those trends. But it's it is really interesting to actually just watch it and and see what's happened in the past and learn from it and, and see what might be coming in our in our future. You know, what's interesting now is to hear a lot of the a lot of the infra commercials going on in the investment. I mean you can tell the market's, you know, is recovering when there's just a lot more demand to get out there and and build your your real estate portfolio. Yeah, the hedge funds, they've been buying properties. The last three years have been really the best time to buy. Uh-huh. It's, it's uh, a good time to buy now, but the best time to buy has been the last three years. Yeah. Uh, so they've purchased uh, you know, a ton of properties, a lot of them at 90% of, of the uh, market value of them. And you know, I, I work with uh, one in particular, and I know that their plans is to, they're planning to sell it uh, when they see that bubble uh-huh. happening in about seven years. And even so, if you bought, you bought a real estate, if you bought an investment property at the height of the market, it... As long as you didn't sell, really, the market's recovering now. But even before the market recovered, look what happened to rents. I mean, it was still a great opportunity for people to have investment properties because the rents were going up so high and they're continuing to go up. I mean, there's multiple offers on rental agreements right now. And there's things things in the contract that are requiring them that after a year, the rents are going to automatically go up. It's crazy. So even if you had bought an investment property when the market right before the market tanked, you were getting a lot for that monthly rent. Yeah, rental market's crazy, especially it's so in, crazy. if you go to Seattle, Ballard mm-hmm. area. Oh my goodness! Yeah, there's like forty people for one one townhouse I'm at eighteen hundred a month for like a three bedroom town. Yeah, crazy right now. My, my stepdaughter and her boyfriend are currently looking for a rental, and yeah, it's it's really crazy. Well, Roland, thank you so much for coming back in studio. It's always a pleasure to have you here, and I think it was a, a great to sh- show to do today. Lots of great information. Again, to talk with any of my guests, pick up the phone, give the show a call, one 855 411 Again, that's one 855 411 or go online to themoneyhour.com. If you missed any of the segments that we had and any of the guests in studio, you can always listen to uh, my podcast. Rylan, again, thank you so much. Great. It's great to be here again. Thank you. And this is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope that you're having an awesome weekend, enjoying our beautiful Seattle that we have here before uh, the weather changes a little bit. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and I'll talk to you again next week, next Saturday, right here on 1150 AM at KKNW.